Welcome back to Norn Tesla. Here are 20 reasons why electric cars aren't taking over. Yeah, just kidding. But seriously, that is a headline brought to you by the good folks at MotorJunkie.com. They came out with a similar article way back in 2019. So back then, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt as EV technology wasn't there, but since then it's exploded. There's EVs everywhere. Now, I'm not saying Motor Junkie is the holy grail of automotive news. They have some good stuff, I'm sure. They're just kind of another one of those thousands of car blog sites out there. But this does speak to the amount of misinformation out there about electric cars, and maybe that's why they're not taking off. If anyone did some basic research, half of these reasons don't even hold water. So let me get into it, but before I do, please take a second and subscribe. So the first one on the list is expensive battery replacement. Well, yeah. A battery replacement is expensive, anywhere from five to 10 grand. I've also heard 20 grand sometimes, but do you know what else is expensive? An engine replacement. Most combustion engines will get you to around 150,000 to maybe 300,000 miles before they start falling apart and needed to be replaced. Most EV batteries will actually have at least that long, if not more, they also have a 10 year warranty. Uh, they can almost double that mileage before losing any significant range. That's the issue with, bat with the battery is that you're gonna lose range, it's not gonna fall apart. How many of you out there have swapped engines in your car? Probably not, you probably just get a new one. Number two, charging stations. Now look at the supercharger network. And that's just Tesla, not including the thousands of third-party chargers out there. And generally people charge at home, so the need for charging stations isn't much of a concern for most EV owners. Number three, heavy weight. Seriously, since when is that a factor? How many people even know the weight of the vehicle they're currently driving? If you look for any specs, it's way down, way at the bottom. You can't even find it. I was looking for a Ford Fusion and compared it to a Model 3, and it's about 300 pounds, but I had to look for that. And you know what's better with heavy weight is it's better in the snow, better traction. So number four, inability to repair. So this is the first one on the list that has an ounce of truth. Yes, outside Tesla dealerships, there isn't a common mechanic around town who knows how to fix EVs. But the benefit of that is an EV is one simple motor. It doesn't have much less parts than a regular car. So there's much less stuff to break down and need to repair in the first place. I've had my car three years, and I think I've had to go there once. Number five, range isn't there. Most EVs now have a range of 250 to 350 miles. The average commute is less than 50 miles. So most EVs can get you to work over half the week before needing a charge. And when you charge daily like you're supposed to, it's not an issue. For road trips, there are enough fast chargers out there that it isn't much of a concern. Number six, slow charging times, eight hours. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I know there's some Fords that take about 8 to 14 hours, but a Tesla is anywhere from 4 to 6 hours, and that's overnight while you're sleeping. So does it really matter how long it charges for? And as far as supercharging on the road, uh, you're looking at about 5 to 40 minutes at the most. So if you go to the bathroom or go for a snack, get lunch, uh, you're done. Number seven, high price tags. All right, that one is legit. Even with tax breaks, EVs are very expensive. An equivalent gas car will almost always be cheaper, uh, especially these days with inflation and the cost of raw materials they're going up in price. The only thing I can say for that is over the life of the car, the amount you save on gas and maintenance, it might make up for the initial high cost. Number eight, batteries will wear out. See number one, uh, there's Tesla currently right now on the road with over 200,000 miles on the original battery. Tesla's battery warranty is for eight years or 120,000 miles. So your battery's gonna last, don't worry. Number nine, fire hazard. In the article, they say because it's electric, the risk of fire is higher than a gas powered vehicle. Sorry, are you saying that a battery has a higher risk than a flammable liquid? In fact, stats from 2021 actually show hybrids have the highest rate of fire at about 3,000 per 100,000 cars, while gas cars are uh, 1,500 to 100,000 cars, and way at the bottom, EVs at a paltry 25 per 100,000. So do the math. Number 10, subpar performance. Are you kidding me? The Model S Plaid is the fastest production car in the world. It goes 0 to 60 in under two seconds. The article actually goes ahead and admits that the new Tesla models are quite fast, but getting drivers to realize they are fast is another thing. You know what helps? Not writing articles that say subpar performance is number 11 of 20 reasons why EVs aren't taking over. Number 11, lack of availability. Well, that's true and it's not. Uh, Tesla's problem is too much demand. They really can't make cars fast enough. And that also goes for most other manufacturers as well. You literally need to be put on a wait list to get an EV. And if they're talking about options out there, there's so many EV options right now, and there's just more coming down the pipe. Number 12. Isn't that pretty much number four? I mean, you're kind of drawing a straw to get a full 20, in my opinion. But anyways, 
if you buy from the regular guys, yes, service centers are everywhere, so not really an issue. But in regards to Tesla, they don't have as many. Yes, we know. But if your car requires service and you live more than 200 kilometers from a service center, a service technician will actually come to your house. Now, when was the last time the other guys did that? Number 13, lack of charging infrastructure. That one is hard to predict, and I'm no civil engineer or anything like that, so I really don't know what our grid is capable of now or in the future. Most cars charge at night when demand is on the grid is lowest, so that's a good thing. It shouldn't be an issue for years to come, but by 2030, when most governments want 100% EV adoption, I don't know if the infrastructure that we have now is going to be sufficient. It definitely needs to be upgraded, and it needs to start with that. Number 14, high electric bill. Well, sure, hydro bill will go up, of course, maybe 2 or $3 a day, but would you rather pay 2 or $3 a day or $80 to $150 to fill up a tank each time? Why would a cheaper option scare people away? To me, that's the biggest benefit of owning an EV. Number 15, limited cargo capacity. Now, this one clearly goes in the lack of basic research section. Uh, the battery in a modern EV is on the floor. Think of it like a skateboard with wheels on your end. So you have your regular trunk in the back. Uh, in some cases, you have a trunk underneath that trunk. And then in most cases, you have a frunk in the front, which is basically a front trunk. The frunk on the F-150 Lightning is 14 cubic feet. So that is a lot of room. Number 16, electric car cost. How many times are they going to reuse the same reasons? Number 17, zero emissions is a lie. Yes, we still have coal plants. So making electricity isn't green and makes emissions. But when you're driving, the end product is not making more emissions. On top of that, so isn't that better? Number 18, quick charging can damage batteries. Yes, this one is actually true. Uh, supercharging or fast charging isn't great for the long-term health of the battery. This is why Tesla doesn't recommend you supercharge on a daily basis, but instead charge at home, which generally most people do exactly just that. Now, it definitely won't damage your battery. It's just for the long-term health of it so it lasts longer. It's just like your phone. Uh, same lithium battery, so when they're advertising all these like 18 watt fast charging, it just it damages the battery so it doesn't last as long. So slower, the better. Number 19, resale value is questionable. Have you seen Auto Trader lately? I can sell my car right now and make a profit. People are making like 20,000 profit. You order a car, you can sell it right off and make profit. Number 20, parts are hard to find. Well, see number 17, parts for everything these days are hard to find. But the good thing is that not a lot of parts that are required are going to need fixing. Well, there you have it. If you repeat reasons and exaggerate others, it's easy to come up with 20 reasons why to not buy an EV. But if you actually do your research by reading articles and watching videos like this one, then you can make an educated decision and decide for yourself if an electric vehicle is the way to go for you. So thanks again for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss when I release videos, which is about every week. So thanks again for watching.